ब्रॉड टू यू बाय एजिलस डायग्नोस्टिक्स एजिलस डायग्नोस्टिक्स बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विद अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ डॉक टॉक डोंट फॉरगेट टू लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड शेयर A concern that's gaining attention, much like COVID did, is now the Zika virus. Currently, Pune is experiencing an outbreak with a total of 19 cases reported, including pregnant women. This situation has led health authorities to issue warnings and take firm actions. So the question is, what exactly is the Zika virus? The virus spreads primarily through mosquito bites, particularly those of the Aedes species. It can cause mild symptoms like fever, rash, joint pain and red eyes. But for pregnant women, it's dangerous as it can be transmitted to the fetus, potentially causing birth defects. To talk about this in more detail, we have an expert with us today. Zika virus is an arthropod-borne flavivirus that is transmitted by a mosquito. Since it belongs to flavivirus, it also behaves like other flaviviruses like dengue we have heard a lot about dengue but zika virus is mainly heard in tropicals and subtropical areas of africa and there have been lot of outbreaks there and there has also been in 2016 an outbreak in america but in india recently we have heard a few cases of zika virus in pune maharashtra and even kerala why is it has happened because there has been a lot of rainfall following which there has been water logging and these viruses usually develop in these areas like we talk about always dengue viruses now this virus how is it different from dengue it is it it behaves much like dengue except that 80% of patients are asymptomatic but but when it becomes symptomatic it produces a similar symptoms like low grade fever rash which can be macular papular there could be conjunctivitis there could be myalgias arthralgias aches and pains vomitings so many features they resemble actually like dengue but why are so we worried about zika virus the reason being this virus is neurotrophic it also brings along with it few complications which are not so routinely seen with other flaviviruses here in adults in in some patients the complications do not occur in all the patients but when it occurs it can cause gulenberry syndrome which means that there there is involvement of nerves in the form of polyneuropathy it is also called as acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy where there is ascending paralysis this is one of the most important complication that is seen in adults with zika virus which we need to be on a lookout of and this so happens because it is an immune mechanism now can the zika virus affect the children also yes in pregnant women there has been a specific warning by who that we have to be on a lookout that the, the all the fetuses that are exposed to zika virus since as i mentioned that zika virus is asymptomatic but in females who have been exposed to zika virus and in the fetus there has been an exposure so the exposure intrauterine or even postnatally both ways it can affect the baby in the intrauterine phase there has been a warning and it has been found the babies are born with a small head what is called as microcephaly it is a very important cause and who has uh, issued this warning that all the pregnant women with these symptoms should be screened for zika virus especially in the area where there is uh, outbreak so that the babies with these congenital anomalies can be picked up not only this but also there could be some fetal loss there could be preterm births there could be some other congenital anomalies as well or and about the young children again there could be neurological symptoms or complications in the form of encephalomyelitis transverse myelitis seizures so because of these complications zika virus has gained lot of popularity and we should be on a lookout of now how do we diagnose this the diagnosis is by rt pcr which we are aware of and what about treatment treatment is there is no specific antidote there is no specific treatment it is mainly supportive when the patient comes patient has fever we have to give antipyretic we have to look out onto other major organs for all the complications these uh, patients can have and give supportive treatment to help the patients
Thank you. So to protect ourselves, it's essential to follow precautionary measures. If you have any symptoms, please consult your doctor. And if you are pregnant, be extra cautious. That's all for today. Keep watching Doc Talk on Fit